Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this late afternoon, early evening winter scene um, with the light just fading and the clouds sort of tinged with that lovely delicate pink that you get just before twilight. I've um, drawn the scene out very loosely, a few trees and the shape of the river and the distant trees onto my watercolour paper. My paper is Milford 100% cotton cold press watercolour paper. It's taped to my board and my board is an angle of about um, 20 to 30 degrees. It's an angle that's useful for painting at because gravity kind of helps with the painting and keeps the paint flowing. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint my first layer wet in wet. So using a large wash brush and I'm going to be using my Princeton Aqua Elite one and a half inch flat mottler brush. I'm going to wet the sky stopping at the horizon line so that I can leave my water dry. Um, I don't want to paint the water yet. I'm going to leave that and paint that in wet onto the dry painting later. This is a mixture of ultramarine blue with a little bit of indigo in it to darken it down a bit and to give me that late afternoon, early evening feel to the blue. So I want it nice and light, so I'm leaving some gaps uh, between the blue and bringing it down a little bit paler towards the horizon. And now I'm going to use a little bit of um, burnt sienna keeping my brush strokes fairly horizontal, just lightly touching this colour in. You can see where the burnt sienna is mixing with the blue, it's turning grey but still keeping that subtle sort of pink glow to it. Keeping my clouds a little bit softer, a little bit paler as I come down towards the horizon um, and then just introducing a little bit more blue across the horizon, um, although most of that will be covered by my distant trees and that's about it for the sky and of course the sky area is still wet so I'm going to get in my mid-ground trees and my distant trees using the same brush I've dipped into raw umber sepia and a little bit of uh, my indigo and I'm dragging up into the wet paint just a few sort of shapes that will give me my distant tree, well, my mid-ground tree line on either side. And then I can use some slightly uh, fainter marks across that distant horizon line for a row of distant trees, making it a little bit paler so that that area recedes into the distance. And now to paint the land. I'm going to paint this um, wet onto the dry page and I've dipped into uh, varying amounts of raw sienna, raw umber, sap green and a bit of sepia um, just to start to create sort of a rough grassy area um, sort of out in the wild just a tangle of sort of weeds and grasses and things just to suggest the riverbank without painting too much detail keeping my brush strokes mostly horizontal will keep the land flat feathering off the brush strokes around the edge of the riverbank and then the same over this side following my pencil guidelines. Darkening up just below the tree line. So I get a nice contrast between that and the river. Just working from side to side until I feel that the first layer is done.
I'm going to use the tip of my palette knife to scrape through the damp paint to reveal some lighter marks there just for a few highlights. And lastly, just a few little impressions of reeds and grasses in the foreground. And that's the first layer finished. It's now time to let it dry completely, so I'm going to go and make a cup of coffee. So about half an hour later, here's the dry painting. Um, I'm just going to work into it now, painting wet on dry. So that's using um, wet paint mixtures onto the dry painting, which will give me more harder edge detail, which should contrast nicely with the very softly diffused passages of paint that I've created using the wet in wet method. The first thing I'm doing is using um, quite a watery mix of my blue and I'm just going to get in the impression of the water using horizontal brush strokes and my three quarter inch flat brush. I'm not going to paint the entire water area blue, I'm going to leave some unpainted paper showing through to suggest the light reflecting on the water and to suggest a little bit of movement in the water too. I'm going to add a little bit of indigo to that blue to darken it up very slightly just below the trees there. Again, keeping the brush strokes horizontal, which keeps the water nice and flat. Now to leave the water to dry, and then I can come back and paint the trees. Even though it's um, an early evening scene and twilight, I still want my trees to show up. So I'm using lamp black today for my trees, so that they show up nicely against that dark mid-ground tree line. I'm using my number two rigger. I'm following the pencil sketch that I put in at the beginning because I can see it through the washes even though it looks rather faint on screen. And now using the side or belly of the brush with my Escoda Perla size 14 to drag a bit of dry brush um, over the end of those uh, branches just to make it look like those fine twigs that you get right at the end of all the canopies.
So just a few finishing touches to the banks of the river in places. If you wanted to at this stage, you could bring down some sort of wiggly lines with the rigger to put reflections in the water. Uh, but I think I like this as it is. I think the plain water reflecting sort of just the sky colours to a certain extent, I think works fairly well. Um, and saying that, you could also put in a little bit of that burnt sienna colour into the water to reflect some of the clouds too. Um, but that's sort of something that I've sort of thought of in hindsight, that if I was to paint this scene again, that's probably what I'd do. So removing the tape, we get to see the painting and see it with its clean white border, which helps us to see it with fresh eyes. And I think that my trees aren't quite dark enough, so I'm going to mix up a nice rich mixture of lamp black. And I'm going to go into the painting um, again, the base of the trees, the main trunks and just a few of the stronger branches uh, with a darker colour just to layer up that lamp black. And that will give me that sort of darker value that I need at the base of the trees where they're pretty much in shadow. And here's the finished painting. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this one come together. I really enjoyed painting it. I particularly enjoyed painting the sky with these lovely, subtle sort of um, twilight clouds in them. I was trying out my um, Sennelier burnt sienna because I've run out of Cotman burnt sienna. And it's a lovely colour for skies. It's much closer to... Um, a Venetian red or a light red I think and that's why it's given me these beautiful effects. So it's worth bearing in mind that different brands of paint even though they're called the same colour will give you different results. If you'd like to look at the play my playlists I have a colour swatching playlist which compares various brands of different colours that you may find interesting. So many thanks for watching. Uh, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thanks so much to everyone that supports the channel on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting us, then please follow the links below. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.